All right, so I'm working on another equilibrium question in this video. It's a past paper, but I'm not sure of the year. All right, so we have the reaction here as usual. So it says state the effect of each of the following on the equilibrium position right, of this reaction. So it says an increase in pressure. All right, so what, sh what you should know When the pressure of the system is increased, equilibrium shifts to the side with fewer moles. All right, so when pressure is increased, the equilibrium shifts to the side with fewer moles. When pressure is decreased, it shifts to the side with more moles. So based on the equation, we have two moles of SO2 and one mole of O2. So that's a total of three moles. And on this side, we have two moles of SO3. So the left-hand side, it has more moles. So if pressure is increased, the, system, the equilibrium shift to the side with fewer moles. That means the equilibrium is going to shift to the product side, which is the right side. So equilibrium will shift to the right. As for temperature, the first thing I do is look at this sign here. Whatever sign I see here, it's for the forward reaction. So this is saying that the formation of sulfur trioxide is an exothermic process. The reverse now is the opposite. So the forward reaction is exothermic and the reverse reaction is endothermic. So just like with pressure, all right, let me just pause on. All right, so when it comes to temperature, when the, if the reaction is exothermic, when the temperature is increased, it is going to shift to the endothermic side. In this case, it is the left side. So for exothermic, when you increase temperature, it goes to the endothermic side. If you decrease the temperature, it will go to the exothermic side. If the reaction was endothermic, again, when you increase temperature, it goes to the endothermic side. That's all you need to remember. Increase the temperature, it goes to the endothermic side. And if you decrease it, it goes to the exothermic side. So you just need to look at the sign and know which side is endo and which side is exo. So since the forward reaction is exothermic and the reverse is endothermic, when temperature is increased, equilibrium goes to the endothermic side. In this case, it is the left side. Forward exo, reverse endo. So the equilibrium is going to shift to the left hand side. So pressure increases, it shifts to the right with fewer moles. Temperature increase, it shifts to the endothermic side, which is the left. All right, so the calculation now, It says when SO2 and O2 were mixed in a two to one ratio, a 203 Kelvin, the total equilibrium pressure of the system is 101.3 kilopascal. Calculate KP at 203 kilo, 
a 303 Kelvin for the reaction, if at equilibrium, the number of moles of SO2, O2, and SO3 are 1.2, 0.6, and 0.8, respectively. Now, once they give you everything at equilibrium, you do not, you do not need the ice table. We can just go ahead and do our calculations. So we do not need to construct an ice table. Now, when you are dealing with pressure, when you're dealing with Kp, we have to calculate the, the partial pressure of, of everything. So all the reactants and products. So partial pressure, that is equal to the mole fraction times the total pressure. All right. So the partial pressure of, let's, let's start with SO2. So mole fraction, it's the individual mole, right? Or the mole of the particular substance. So in this case, the mole of SO2, which is 1.2. So it's the mole of SO2 divided by the total mole. So 1.2 plus 0.6 plus 0.8, the total mole, so mole fraction is the individual mole divided by the total that small fraction and the total pressure here is 101.3 kilopascal. So the the, the partial pressure for O2 would be 0 0.6. All right, so after you work out the partial pressure for SO2, O2, and SO3, remember just like any equilibrium expression, it is the products over the reactants. So the product was SO3. And if you remember from the equation, it was two moles of SO3. So it becomes SO3 squared. The P is for partial pressure. So it's the partial pressure of SO3 
divided by the partial pressure of SO2 squared times O2. So we square the SO3 as well as the SO2 because from the balance equation, we use two, two moles of each of them. So you just plug in your answers into the equation and then you get your final answer. All right, so the final answer I got is 0 0.019. Remember, it's with equilibrium constant, you have to calculate the, the unit. In this case, it was Kp. All right, so Kp squared. So that's Kpa times Kpa divided by KPA times KPA. So that takes care of the P, P SO2 squared. And then the O2 is also KPA. So that cancels that, that cancels that. You are left with kilopascal, but it's below the line. So it is per kilopascal. So just put KPA negative one. And that's your unit. The final part of the question asks us to comment on the value of KP at 695 Kelvin. So if you remember this, it said it took place at, I think it was 303 Kelvin. Right. So what would be the value of Kp at 6.95? So basically they're asking us to comment on the value of Kp when the temperature is increased. As we said earlier, when the temperature is increased, it would favor the side of the reactants because the equilibrium would shift to the left. So when equilibrium shifts to the left, it will produce more of your reactants. So the concentration of the reactants would increase and the concentration of the product would decrease. That means what is at the top, which is the SO3, that is going to decrease and the denominator is going to increase. So for example, if you had if the concentration of, if SO3, it had a value, not concentration, let's say it had a partial pressure of 10 and SO2 and O2 combine, when you multiply them, you had an answer of five. 10 over five, that would have given us two. All right, so let us say that is what happened at 303 Kelvin. The increase the temperature equilibrium goes to the left. So the concentration of the reactant increase and products decrease. So let us say now it is eight over seven. That's 1.14. All right, so as you can see, if you increase the temperature, equilibrium shifts to the left. Concentration of reactants in increase, not the concentration. The partial pressure, when we work it out here, it will increase. That's because the amount of SO2 and O2 is increasing. So a simple one mark answer. The value of Kp, It did not answer any explanation. It just said comment. Well, I guess we can comment. The value of Kp will be less at 695 Kelvin because the equilibrium will
Alright, so KP will be less at 16.95 because equilibrium will favor the red ones at that temperature. Alright, so that was it for this equilibrium question. If you have any comments or if you have any question, leave it in the comment section.